Hi, my name's John and um, I have Manatahi Museum. I started very, very young. When I was four years old, I um, had quite an interest in um, taxidermy, especially the beautiful colours on the metallic pheasants and stuff like that that I'd seen as a child in a sports shop. And it's been a passion of mine that has grown through the years and has never, never stopped. Um, and now I'm at the point to where we have the Manatahi Museum, one of the biggest private collections in New Zealand. We have um, been donated a lot of stuff through the years. We have collected a lot of stuff. And to me, it is important now to collect all the stuff and pull it under one roof and have the past for the present because we're fast losing a lot of these animals. So all of the stuff that's in here will be looked after and go on and could become a national treasure along the way because you can't put together now in a lifetime the type of stuff that I've collected over my lifetime and I'm 57 now, so that's quite a passion for one's life to carry on through. We have animals from all over the world. We have been lucky enough to collect animals from the zoo when they pass away. So we always say, don't kill the rare animals just for the sake of taxiderming them. Let's breed them, preserve them, but if they die, let's use them, mount them up, put them in a museum so people can appreciate what a real specimen looks like. So the next 20 years, there's gonna be a lot of changes out there in the world. We're starting to see them come through now. So the big emphasis is, is keeping all of this stuff together. All of our elder generation that hunted these animals way back in the 40s and 50s, when it was more socially acceptable to hunt animals, not so much like today with a lot of the paddock shooting that goes on. These things were collected back then, so we're lucky to have them. So let's not waste what we've got. Let's keep it all together for the future for the next generation to see as well as an educational tool. Uh, I'd just like to show you a few visual items that we have here. Um, a few of the things in the collection that we've brought in over the years. This polar bear here, this is a really big male polar bear, this one. This was brought into the country 20 years ago as a salted skin and it was brought off the Eskimos because the Eskimos are allowed to harvest so many bears a year, it's their national right. So we're very lucky to have this animal. And over here, we have a zebra. The zebra come from the local Pahuakai Zoo years ago. Now this thing passed away and so very lucky to have that. And now we have the rhino. We have the black rhino here and we have the white rhino here. The black rhino come from Kevin Shannon down to Dunedin who is a doctor all his life that travelled the world. So these things were collected back in the 40s and 50s. I knew when I was in my teenage years that these animals were about. And because I've got such a passion for putting a museum together for the future, these things come into my care, so I'm very, very lucky to have them. Now, these types of animals now, you wouldn't shoot a rhino just to put it on the wall. So by getting them from way back in the early years, was quite a blessing. We have a whole lot of different animals over here, like your eland, biggest antelope in the world. We have a whole range of African animals that we've collected, and none of these animals, they've all come back from the 40s and 50s, from the early years. So they're in very, very good condition because people have looked after them and kept them in a dark room. So no, not a lot of fading in a lot of them. And the lions that we have here, you can see there's a male and a female. Both of these lions come from Japan. They were taxidermied in Japan and brought over in a crate. They passed away in an animal park over there. Here we have a big reticulated python from Asia. These are the pythons that are running wild in the Everglades now and eating the alligators. And so we're very lucky to have that. That's a big snake. And then when, when you run through the cases here, you'll see all the different species of ducks and hybrids and bits and pieces. We have one here that's particularly unusual, that is a hybrid between a black swan and a domestic goose. The experts said it couldn't happen, but it has. Nature has a funny way of crossing boundaries. Over here we have a uh, serval cat um, catching a partridge. The serval cats were given to me by the local zoo years ago as they passed away. Um, very beautiful little spotted cat. We have a baboon just in front of it. And on either side of it, we have the big African Barbaro sheep half body mounts. And they come from the local Hildale Zoo years ago. We have raw palm turkeys. Over here, we have uh, two of the big bovines. Up the top, we have a Himalayan yak. And down below here, we have a water buffalo from the Northern Territory. And over here we have a lot of monkeys. Uh, the monkeys all come from the local zoo up Pahuakai over the years. Uh, I had a lot to do with Gary Fagan who run the zoo and any time he lost a monkey, 
um, we ended up with it here. So we're very lucky. A lot of these monkeys are freeze dried. Freeze dry is a new technique of taxidermy where the DNA is locked in that monkey. 100, 200, 300 years down the track, if scientists want to take DNA out of those monkeys, they can take DNA out of them for cloning purposes. And over in this case over here, we have a whole lot of parrots, a whole range of parrots. We have uh, parrots here like this big blue and gold macaw here. I mounted that for a fellow 35 years ago who one day brought it back to me and said, John, you can have this back for the museum. I've had my time with it. Different birds like black tail cockatoos, gangangs, or the echolectus with its wings out over there had plucked all the feathers off its breast. So in order, so you can't see that, I mount it like that and use it as a beautiful specimen and everything is worth preserving. So 52 years of collecting parrots out of aviaries, the breeders saved them for me. So I'm very, very lucky to have these and I do them up in big groups, family groups and that because parrots are a flocking bird. So beautiful colors, lots of variety amongst them and we'll have them forever. And over here in this case, we have a beautiful cheetah. This cheetah here was brought into the country years and years ago as a skin. And um, a South African guy that was putting his um, son through university in the States was selling skins out of Africa way back in the 40s. And Kevin, whom I got the black rhino off, who passed that on to me, passed this on to me as well, because um, he at that time thought about bringing the full body skin in and had the whole cat mounted up. So these things now are all very endangered animals and we wouldn't recommend to anybody to shoot them. But again, we always like to preserve the dead ones that die naturally. And over here in this section, we have uh, Hugh Jackson's uh, brother, Wolverine. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the Wolverine is actually an animal that does exist and it's the biggest member of the weasel family. So this one here is a very beautiful animal. They live in very, very cold climates, very vicious animals. These animals can actually stand a bear up on a kill. So they've got a lot of guts. Over here also we have the black bear, we have the otter, we have the coyotes. And as you can see, moose and Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, there's a variation of different things in this group all around here. Over in this section over here, you'll see we have two black timber wolves and we also have a grey wolf skin here that was brought into the country for a full body mount that will be mounted up and we have these big moose. We have Alaskan moose here, two of them, and the caribou above them. Very beautiful looking animals. A lot of people ask me why the shovel on the front of the caribou's face for digging in the snow out in winter time to get to their food source. Over here we have a case full of crabs. Down the bottom here we have a 15 pound lobster and the claw that's at the back, which is absolutely huge, is off up to a 45 pound lobster, which is a really real big granddaddy. We have crayfish, coconut crabs, one of the biggest land crabs in the world. Our deep sea New Zealand spider crab, which comes off the deep water of New Zealand, Rarotongan land crab, spanner crab. We have edible orange crabs here. We have Australian paddle crab, owl paddle crab, Fiji mud crabs, the big ones with an Australian mud crab. So there's a whole variation in crustaceans here. So we're gonna have a lot more crabs along the way. They're very fascinating. We can pop them apart, take all the meat out of them, clean them out, glue them all back together and taxidermy them, put them on display. We have a little bit of a project going on here where this guinea fowl here has just been mounted up and the black swan has uh, just dried out. So this one here, the wing feathers are nice and hard on this bird here. They won't lift up all the skin in here set where this one here has just been done. So when I go like this, 
The feathers all still stick up because the skin is still wet inside so the bird is mounted up while the skin is wet so we can mould it into the position we want where we use the wires here to hold the feathers up how we want and the wire here which is attached to the main body which is made of polystyrene foam so very interesting, um, it's like being an artist, bringing something back to life again.